your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. A striving young man who has fallen on hard times is appealing to the community tonight. He says he is facing eviction and is in need of your help. Mabalu, life has never been easy. Me leave me at the age of 24 to take care of myself, but I was on my own from 8 years old, parking bike, and then after I get older, I went to the boys' home. Children's some of my group in, and I learned how to search and search for love I couldn't find. Still ain't found my daddy yet, even though I know of him. He says even as a child, his struggle has been great. You know, I was like the age of nine, ten years old, and learning how to love, looking for love at the same time, and can't forget working the parking bike and stuff. After I get beer with the garbage from a long time, I used to go and ask for food, pizza hut and stuff, and I learned how to, so as, as I get older, I went back to school, around 13, 14. I like more the boys home, I tell them, thank you. I save, I save like over a thousand dollars an allowance we used to get every week, five dollars of allowance. I was amazed. And as I get older, I continue striving to get the best. And it wasn't easy. I had to keep pushing. But despite Ishmael's challenges, he's always been a hard worker, from cleaning yards to windows and even commercial buildings. He's done it all and has never been afraid of hard work. But now, Ishmael says, he is in one of the toughest positions of his life as he is facing eviction. Not easy. Um, the morning, we didn't go next. And you know if you can sleep in a car or sleep on top of the roof, you don't know what can happen in the moment. If the rain comes down, where your hair can be. So that's why I'm looking at to understand. Eviction is a serious thing. So when you, when you ain't got that job, it ain't easy. But when you have it, be thankful. The humble, striving young man says with no family and nowhere to turn, he's appealing to the hearts of the community that he has served all of his life to give him a helping hand, adding that he is also willing to work. I'm willing to clean a window or house clean, wherever you help me to do, or cut a yard sometimes. But whatever this i looking for, let the father touch your heart to understand where you're coming from and how I feel. And it's not easy. If you wish to assist Ishmael, you can call him at 812-6303. In other news, preschoolers and those who are responsible for educating them being highlighted this week as schools across the island celebrate preschool week. Our ZNS News team stopped by the Freeport Primary School today where those students welcomed a special guest. Jamila Mizek reports. It is preschool week and preschools across Grants Bahama are commemorating under the theme preschool embracing the new norm. Education officer for early childhood Jeanette Hall says the week is celebrated annually. Preschool week is done on an annual basis. We just did we didn't do it last year because of the um, COVID-19 pandemic but um, we said that even though the pandemic is still going on, we have to do something. Even if we, most of the activities were planned at, um, virtually. Paul says there are a number of activities planned, including a church service, preschool virtual show, and Teachers Appreciation Day. She notes the importance of the week. Uh, the preschool week is when we stop and the principals, we want to recognize the principals, the teachers and teachers' aid for all of the hard and excellent work that they're doing here in the Bahamas. The title of the book, Roman and the Pink Flamingos. Now the youngsters were also surprised with a special reading by the nation's leader, Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis. People all over the world know the Bahamas has the best pink flamingos. The pink birds will march around and around.
Paul says the week is always an enjoyable event for the students. The preschoolers are excited. They um, were excited with the fact that um, they heard the Prime Minister read a story to them this morning. And then now they were extra excited when the police officer came in to read to them. They are just so excited about preschool week. Jamila Mizik, ZNS Network News. It's time for our Munchin with Megan segment. Tonight, Megan is baking a tasty treat with a guest chef, Davina Rutherford. I did know Davina could cook, so this should be interesting. Hey guys, welcome to my segment. Today, joining me in the kitchen is guest chef, Davina Rutherford. Davina, tell us what we're making. Hey guys, today we're gonna be making coconut and pineapple tarts. You're gonna need flour, baking powder, salt, butter, lard, milk, eggs. So first, you're gonna add the lard and the butter to the mixer. You're going to add your flour, your baking powder, and your salt into a bowl, and then you pour in your mix. And as that is going, you're going to get your egg. So once you have your egg cracked, you put it in a measuring cup and you add your milk. As this continues to mix, you just add your eggs and your milk mixture gradually. Turn this off. If you have a handheld mixer, you switch and you put in your kneading handle. And if you don't have one, you do that on the counter by hand. But I've, you know, upgraded since COVID <laughs> and I don't have to do all of the hard work. So after about a few minutes, it should look like this. You could flour the counter, and then you wanna take your dough and put it on the counter. If you have a rolling pin, you get your rolling pin, you wanna flour your rolling pin, and knead your dough, knead it out. And you want to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. So that's good, because what we're gonna do now, you cut it into sections. I make my job, because I've been doing this for a while, a whole year, thanks to COVID. <laughs> Um, I cut it into sections. There's no rhyme or? No. Just cut. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we, we will cut off the excess once we start putting it mm -hmm. in the pan. So I spread it out. You could use your hand or you could use the rolling pin to make sure. And then you line the pan. So once you have all of the spots in your pan filled, you're gonna take a spoon, a spoonful, and fill it in. Okay, so once that's done, so we want to take our extra dough. We're going to cut thin strips. And I use it to as the lattice for the topping. So once you have all of your tart in the pan, the eggs that was set aside, you're going to use it as an egg wash. You take nice. your brush and you just dab the top of the dough. This helps the browning while it's in the oven. And we're gonna slide it in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes. And there you have it, coconut and pineapple tarts. And now it's time to munch. Tevi and I have to try it to really believe it. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for us here in the, for news, or that is. We go now to Jay Philippe with sports. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Jay Fleet and welcome to sports. A major track meet is expected to take place on the island of Grand Bahama next year. Some of the very top American universities and colleges will be on display. Jimmy the Music has more. It is being dubbed the Bahama Spring Classic and it is set to take place March 18th to 20th, 2022. Founder and CEO of Island Relays Bahamas, Joyce Johnson says, the Invitational is a premium track and field meet that will see colleges from all across the United States, including a number of HBCUs. We're also gonna have professional runners that have committed to participating. Um, they're going to come in and we're going to have high school runners as well so that we can create some opportunities for some of the athletes to get scholarships with the colleges that will be here. We are also um, going to have the um, 
all the colleges bring in their recruiting teams from the academic side of the house because we want them to be able to speak with parents and students who are interested in attending those colleges and universities so they can learn how to get scholarships, how to engage, what the cost is, and what they need to do to be successful for their college entry. High school athletes will also be in action, and District Superintendent Ivan Butler says any opportunity that will afford their students to obtain scholarships is a worthwhile venture. Many of our high school students will get the opportunity to participate, and so that too will be um, a welcome addition for us on the island, as many of them have not had the opportunity to showcase their talents thus far this year. So we are very, very pleased and happy for this opportunity for our students, and we hope our students and parents take full advantage of this opportunity. Now, the event is expected to bring hundreds of visitors to the island, and Ministry of Tourism General Manager Stephen Johnson says this will be a great boost for the destination. We're excited. It's economic uh, stability for Grand Bahama, and uh, we uh, track and feel is one of those opportunities that is going to be the gross for Grand Bahama. We can feel it, we can see it, and so we're just really happy to have them here in Grand Bahama, showing them around facilities such as the track and field stadium here in Grand Bahama, hotels and other activities throughout Grand Bahama. We want to get everybody involved and we want these funds to spread throughout uh, Grand Bahama community. For more information on the Bahama Spring Classic Invitational, persons can visit their website at islandrelaysbahamas.com. Jamila Mizek, ZNS Total Sports.